So my name is Michael and I'm from NWA3D. We're based in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and we sell these printers in order to help train you and get you more into that prototyping industrial area. So first, we're gonna talk about the four steps to print. And that first one from yesterday was design. So basically we want to create or make something and something that we can end up printing off. And what we need out of that design phase is going to be an STL. So now that we realize that we need an STL file and that's what we're going to be using in Cura, we can go ahead and jump back into Cura and we'll go through all of the settings real quick like, and then we'll be able to move on to the printers and make sure it's set up. So I'm gonna share my screen so you guys can see it. And then if you wanna go ahead and open up Cura yourself, I'm going to do the same. Now it's gonna go into the main screen. You should see this add new machine wizard if it's the first time run. Yep, we're there. Perfect, so we're gonna click next. And then we're gonna choose other on this select your machine. Then we're gonna click next one more time. And we're going to choose the Mendel, M-E-N-D-E-L. And that is the operating system. Click next and finish. Perfect. So now it's going to plop us into a new build space. And this blue representation that you see is actually going to be the build area of your printer. So we're gonna have to change that a little bit here in a second, make it a little bit larger for our printer itself. And then over here on the left-hand panel are all of our print settings. What I mean by print settings, these are the things that are going to determine how the print looks at the end or how it's going to move through the object in order to print the plastic. So first, let's go ahead and click in the top left-hand corner and click on machine. We're going to click machine settings. And it's going to pull up a new dialog box. We're going to change the width, depth, and height to a little bit larger. So the maximum width will be 300. The depth is also going to be 300, so 12 inches by 12 inches, right about. And then finally, our maximum height will be 400. So that's gonna be about 16 inches tall. So we wanna make sure that the heated bed is enabled. So we do have a checkbox there, it should already be there. And now all we need to do is change the machine name. So we can go ahead and click change machine name, just for reference, NWA 3D A31 the name of our company and A31 is the model of printer, so you know who to contact if you need anything. We're gonna click OK one more time. And finally click OK down here in the bottom left. Now our build space is much larger. So I zoomed out just now just by using a scroll wheel. And if you kind of learn the camera controls real quick, it helps here in a second. Right clicking allows you to rotate the box around. The scroll wheel will zoom in and out. And then finally, if you hold down the shift key and right click, it's going to pan. That's just a little bit about camera controls. Most likely you guys have a small little robot inside of yours and that's perfect. Now, if you want to print the robot, you are welcome to. If you would rather print a cube or dice, you are welcome to do that as well. And that is on the SD card. So let me grab my SD card, it's in my pocket here. I carry it around with me all the time. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do before we change these print settings, let's go ahead and load a model in. So we're going to need to pick an STL file type. So I'm gonna click here in this top left-hand corner, it says load on the little emblem here with the folder. And in here, there is a ton of different kinds of prints and I actually don't see the print. Let me grab my other one. load again, and then it's gonna pull me into the SD card that I have. So if you notice, I have a couple of extra G codes in here. 
which is the file type afterwards, but I'm going to click on the STL files folder. By clicking in that folder, you'll notice that there's two STL files in an extra folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the six sided dice. <coughs> my build area real quick. So by double clicking on the six sided STL file, it's going to go ahead and put that dice in our environment. And I'm going to load one other model just for reference so I can show you a little bit more about Kira. So no need to load this and you're welcome to keep the robot there if you would like. And I'll show you how to delete the other one here in a second. Excellent. So I have two types of models loaded in right now. And so they look really small on the build space, but that's all right. It can print whatever size you need. It's just large in case you want to. So what we're going to talk about now is these settings on the left-hand side. Now that we have models in, we know and and then I also have an extra example for you. Let's go ahead and start changing our values to represent what we would really like. So here at the very top, at quality and layer height, this determines the utmost quality. So this is going to determine basically the very resolution of your print. Do you want it to look really smooth and fine or do you want it to look more coarse but be quick? So in that regard, we can go anywhere from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 millimeters layer height. Now 0 0.3 is going to be quite a bit quicker and it's going to be much more coarse. 0 0.1 is going to be slower because it has more plastic to lay down, but it's going to look very nice. I like the in-between, so I'm going to choose 0 0.2. And then we're going to have the next value called shell thickness. Shell thickness determines the width of our outside walls. And so I mean outside walls by only the ones that are perpendicular from the build plane. So the one that's sitting for the cube that's sitting on the build plate itself is not con considered a shell thickness. It is considered a bottom or top thickness, like so. So we want to make sure that we understand the difference between how the walls are going to print. And the shell thickness walls are going to just lay down a piece of plastic back and forth as the printer move while the top and bottom is going to be multiple crosses around it in order to lay the surface area down. So we're going to change this value to 0 0.8. 0 0.8. And I chose 0 0.8 as two shells. So the walls will be two walls thick. The way that is determined is by our nozzle size. So if you recognize that our value turned yellow here, which means it's not quite happy and it wants that something else to change. And that is referring to the nozzle size. The nozzle size is a hardware piece on your printer and it can't be changed unless you change the nozzle itself. And on these printers, we have a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So in other words, every time that it passes one area, it's going to lay down 0 0.4 millimeters of plastic. And so that's why if we want two shells, it's 0 0.8. If we want three shells, it'd be 1.2 and so on. So we need a multiple of four on shell thickness. You guys feel comfortable with that? Yes. Okay. Next, we're gonna have the enable retraction, and that one's really simple. All it does is pull the plastic back so it doesn't string. So what I mean by stringing is sometimes the plastic can drool out of the nozzle, and it, it'll leave basically strings across your print, and it looks kind of ugly. So we're going to leave that enabled to make it look a little bit nicer. I'm going to change the bottom top thickness. I'm also going to change this to 0 0.8. It does not have to be a multiple of four, but I like the walls to be all the same thickness around. We're going to have fill density. And I'm going to show you what fill density is by going ahead and clicking on this right hand top corner. If you notice, it's called view mode in the top right hand corner. And if you want to click on that value, the double hourglass, and then go down to layers. 
is going to create a new view mode for you. And it's gonna basically have a whole bunch of colors on our models, so I just zoomed in here, and it's gonna look a little crazy. But I wanna show you what's inside whenever we change the fill density. So I'm gonna grab this little scroll bar here on the right hand side, just under our view mode panel. And I'm going to scroll it down into the cube. So inside this cube, you can see the lattice structure that it's basically supporting all the walls. Now, if I change my fill density percentage to 10%, watch the yellow inside of my model. If you noticed, it is a lot thinner. There's less of that lattice structure to support the walls, which means it would be a less durable object. So if you're printing things for robotics, just like you said you are, most likely you won't want to have a high fill density in order to create strong, durable products. So I would consider probably producing most of your products, if you're using gears or so on, with at least 25% fill density. If you notice, there's a lot more inside of this, and this is going to be a very hard cube to break. Next, we're going to have our print speed. Print speed just determines how quick your printer is going to move while extruding plastic. And we're going to make sure this value is at 50 millimeters per second. This is the fastest this printer will print successfully while maintaining a very nice quality. If you raise it up to 60 millimeters, you have the potential to have small print defects or problems with plastic adhering to the next layer. So next we're gonna change the printing temperature. We're gonna change that to 220 degrees. That's just our preferred temperature for our PLA. So PLA stands for polylactic acid and is made from cornstarch and also biodegradable. So it's not gonna harm you, there's no bad fumes and it's a great product in order to use. Next we're going to have bed temperature and this does have a heated build plate and that helps prints stick to the build plate and not warp or change shape when it's cooling off the plastic. So we're gonna change this value to 50 degrees Celsius. You could raise this value to 65, would be about the maximum you probably want to go. I believe we have a limiter set at 75 uh, degrees Celsius. If you try and change it up to 75, it may throw you an error code and tell you you max bed temp. So if that happens, that is the way to fix it. Next, we're going to talk about support types. So we are currently in the view that we can view supports in. So if I come all the way back to normal view mode, just by clicking in the top right and selecting normal, I'm going to change from no supports to everywhere. Now you'll notice if this shampoo lid that I have inside of this environment, it will not print like this. It, we can't print plastic midair. It's just impossible. So what we need to do is we need to put supports underneath this area in order to make it to where it can hold it. So I put on supports and you'll notice that it loaded up here and my time increased a little bit. And now I'm gonna show you the layer view mode one more time and it's going to have changed from before. So now you may notice that there's a lot of blue inside of this model. That blue, that light blue color that we have is the supports that are helping create everything else. So the areas that are not supported otherwise or would fall if they didn't have it would now have supports like so. So Kira does this for you in case you have a very intricate model and you can enable or disable that. Now the difference between everywhere supports, you'll notice that this area is filled. If I choose touching build plate, it's only things that are directly above the build area. So it will not put any supports inside of here. We recommend using everywhere until you're used to the support types and how the printer is going to make your items. So I'm gonna go back to none real quick. And now I'm going to change the diet, oh, sorry, platform adhesion type. So platform adhesion does exactly as it says. It helps hold things down onto the build space. 
And if you choose that value, it'll create an extra structure below the area in order for it to kind of create a suction cup effect on a brim. So you'll notice there's extra blue around each object and that's allowing it to stick to the build area. So if you have problems with it laying down, try that. Next, we have filament, and we need to change the filament to match ours. So we need to change this value to 1.75. If you look on the side of your spool, you should also notice that it has a sticker. That sticker will tell you what type of plastic it is. It'll tell you the size or diameter of it and also what color you have. I believe you guys have protopasta, is that correct? We have what? Protopasta. It's a uh, sure. fiber, carbon fiber, uh, stainless steel kind of filament. Uh, it came with the printer. Not white. Yeah, it's just white. It just says white. Okay, so that white one that was inside the little the box that came with the printer, that yeah. is, it will be the same. It should be PLA and it should just be white. Okay, our other three, we ordered three spools. They haven't come in yet. Okay, you haven't received those yet? They nope. may have been shipped in a different box. They should have been shipped at the exact same time, though. I, after this, will check up on your order. Let me take a note of that. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. So now that we have our diameter on our filament changed, we can go ahead and say that all of our settings are correct. So we have everything changed to what we want to. So three spools of filament. And now, inside of the Cura environment, we can manipulate our objects to print a little bit better. So as is, the shampoo lid is not at a good direction for it to print. I need to rotate it or orient it different. So in order to do that, I need to go back to normal view and click left click on the object itself. And if I choose here in the bottom left-hand corner, the rotate option, it'll pop up three axes around the object. This allows me to grab each one, green, yellow, or red, and it will rotate in that given direction. So I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and stand it on its side like so. And I'm gonna move the cube just by clicking and dragging. And I can also scale up these objects. So we have the rotate option, which is nice. We can orient our prints better to print a little bit, little bit better, depending upon what it is. Then I also have a scale function. And scaling allows us to increase or decrease the size or manipulate the object from width, height, and depth. Now, I want this shampoo lid to be a little bit bigger because it's designed a bit too small. So I am going to type in 2.0 and it will double the size of my print. Now this is going to be more realistic as something that would be used, but also if you notice, the time went from right around 25 minutes to an hour and 27 minutes. So do consider that increasing the object complexity and size will drastically increase the time it requires to print. Hello? Sorry, we got disconnected. Oh, sorry about that. Didn't even realize. Okay, so what was the last part? Oh, it was uh, you uh, grabbed the, uh, you were showing us the red, yellow, and green. Okay. Axis and you this twisted view? the shampoo. Oh, perfect. Okay, I twisted the shampoo. So that is the rotate yep. function. And that's, that's simple, that's easy. You guys will definitely understand that. Now I chose the direction I did on my shampoo bottle because of the hinge that I created. Now this hinge, if I want it to print correctly, I would like it to print in this vertical direction. That's because when I look at my layer view, which shows me how the printer is actually going to make it, you'll notice that the lines, so this is design considerations if you're printing objects, you'll notice the lines are going across it like so. And this is going to give it more strength as a hinge rather than if I printed it up and down, which the lines would have been going like so. So if the lines are going across the hinge, they would snap immediately. But now since they're going opposite, they should be a lot stronger. 
So that is something to consider how the printer will make it itself. So it makes it in X, Y's. So you have to consider on layer very on one, this is going to be the items that will create, and then it steps up there from there. So this is going to be the Chinese that the printer understands while the STL is the language we understand. Perfect. So next, we can scale the object also. So I need to go back to normal view to change anything. And I scaled the shampoo lid up just before you guys had left. Now, if I want to, I can scale it uniformly or I can unclick this box and choose to shape it in all sorts of weird directions. Second. <laughs> so by choosing the uniform scale, you should be able to change it in size and depth. So I'm gonna leave it at the same size right now. It's gonna take about 30 minutes to print all these objects. Now, one thing about this lid is that if I don't have supports enabled, it's not going to print it correctly because this thing's floating. That's not gonna work right. So what I need to do is I need to enable supports everywhere. And I should also enable like platform adhesion so that I can keep it to the build area. So these are all things to just consider for your printing. And now my first layer looks much more manageable and it looks, oops, sorry, looks like it will adhere and stick. Hey, do we have any questions about Cura at the moment? No, I don't think so. Okay. So next what we're gonna move on to is we're going to go ahead and export these files and we're going to export them as a G code. So now that we have everything set for this particular files, I'm going to click file and save G-code. G-code is the second type of file for you guys to have in your minds. Now that is what goes into the printer while the STL goes into Cura. So I'm going to save the six-sided dice G-code file right on my SD card that we have plugged in. It says it already exists, so I'm just going to replace it. And then make sure you eject the drive. If you don't eject the drive and it doesn't finish saving, the printer will stop mid print and will not do anything. That's because it loses the coordinates that it's supposed to follow and it has no idea what to do. It is a dumb machine. It needs to be told. So please remember that if it, if it ever stops in the middle of your print and it just seems wildly crazy and it stays heated and it's on, most likely it is your G code. You need to resave it and try it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and eject and then pull start out. And now we can move on to working with the printer itself. So now we're done with the computer face. And so the computer face involves the design area and also the slicing. So we slice the object to prepare it for the print. And now let's talk about our printers. So the other steps that we have to go through is transfer, which is the third step, and finally print. So if we go ahead and do the transfer step, we're going to unplug the SD card from the back of our USB, and then we're going to place that inside of our control panel here on this machine. So let me change views. Here we have our printer. And here on the inside of your printer should be a small slot that says SD. Okay. That SD slot, make sure you turn the SD card upside down to where you can see the golden tabs. And then that's how we will insert it inside. And it should click into place. Okay, feel good? One second. We're trying to pull sure thing. Right mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm 
Okay, I think we're ready. Okay, so now if we plug in the SD card here, the gold is on top and it should click into place. That is the entirety of step three. That one's really easy. And the next step would be just to click on the printer itself and go down to print from SD card and then choose print. Now, the things that we want to do before we go over that is you guys assembled it, so you should feel a little bit more comfortable with your printers, but we need to do a little bit extra to make sure this build plate is level. And that's so that the plastic will stick effectively and we'll get our prints to work. Excuse me. So we can go ahead and turn on our printers. You should hear the roaring of the fans. You'll see the printer start up and it should have this same screen. Now this screen is going to display a little bit of information for us. It's here, this is going to be the nozzle. So let me get a little bit closer so you can see it. This is going to be the nozzle. So what's considered heating up and will melt the plastic. And the top value is the value it wants to go to and the bottom value is what it's currently at. So it's at about 20 degrees Celsius and that is room temperature for the room I'm in. Now that is the exact same thing for the build plate right next to it. That's what that is considered. It does the exact same readout. The next one over is our fan, and that's considered to be the cooling fan that cools the print itself. And then we have a string of coordinates. That is telling you where the printer is moving at any point in time. And then below that is the file selection and how long you have left to go. So what we're going to do now yeah, is... Yeah. Hold, on, hold on just a second. Sure. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Sorry, we lost you. Our okay. internet crashed again. Yeah, sure thing. If that ever happens, just, you know, if, if you think it's coming, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just wait until I hear back from you, okay? Okay. All right. So now that we kind of have everything set up and we looked at this control screen and we know that it's plugged in and working, you guys did plug everything in already, is that correct? Yeah, it should be. Perfect. So we can kind of go over that if you would like to, just a basic mechanical inspection. So the next four topics we're going to cover are troubleshooting. So this is if something goes wrong, if the printer doesn't work, what should we do? And so there will be troubleshooting. This will not be a perfect machine because no 3D printer is. Now there can be mess ups and you will have to adjust some things, but usually it should print quite well. So what we're going to do first is the first troubleshooting step is Cura. So it would be to check your slicer, make sure your G code's right and so on. Now we know that is correct. We've already gone through that. So let's go ahead and move on to a mechanical inspection of our printer. So I'm going to point out a couple things to tell you what the printer is. And so first, the main component of our printer is going to be the extruder assembly. And so that includes this piece that has the fan, along with the blue tube and this yellow area that has the extrusion. So this yellow area back here is what pushes plastic, and it pushes it through the tube, and this is going to be the hot end that melts it down. Then we have our x-axis crossbar. This is going to be the y-axis, the one the build plate runs on, and then finally the z-axis is going to be the frame. 
So let's take a look at a couple of different things. So I'm going to turn it to the right and show you the motors and limit switches. Now, if we look inside of here, we do have a limit switch, and that is the plug-in for the limit switch. Now, that is going to tell it when to stop moving in the left-hand direction. So when it moves all the way to the left, it'll click and it'll tell it when to stop. The motor is going to drive the belt that it will run on. And we're going to have a little bit further back, we're going to have our E-motor or extruder, what pushes plastic through this area. And then directly below that, you will notice a Z-motor that is mounted on this large spiral. And the Z-limit switch is just under this. So I'm gonna turn this in order to raise it. So I hold down on the bottom and then spin the spiral and it'll raise up this x-axis. Right underneath here, we should have our Z limit switch. So this tells it when to stop going down. This one is very important, and if it's too low, you will notice the first time we auto home it. It'll try and jam into the build area. So this is what tells it to stop going down. Next, we're going to have our Y motor and our Y limit switch. So hopefully you guys are pretty surefire about that. We also have our final one is going to be this cable. This cable that hooks into the build area is the heat cable. And it should have a tension relief on yours. Our, the older models do not. So we put a paper or a binder clip in order to keep that in place. All right. So do you feel like everything's plugged in, good to go? I think so, yep. Excellent. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to lower this a little bit. We're going to click on the control unit. Go ahead and click the button in, and it will display our main menu. Now we're going to go down to the setup menu, and then click it again, and then choose auto home, the first value. The printer is moving by itself, and it's going to go zero left, zero back and zero down. So it's going to be its origin point. Okay. So the step we're about to cover is called leveling the build plate. And this is probably the most common type of troubleshooting you will have to do. Now, if you level it correctly, it should stay there unless moved, like physically moved. And we should be able to level it pretty easy. So once it auto homes, it locks everything in place. So as you notice, I'm trying to pull on the build plate. It doesn't want to give. If you do pull hard enough, it will give, but you are stripping your belts. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go back into setup so click on the button once, go to setup, and this time choose disable motors. And that should allow us to freely move our build plate and our extruder. Okay, so we don't wanna move it up or down because what we're about to do is level the nozzle, which is the piece that gets hot right inside here, to the build plate. So we wanna have it a very, oops, sorry very minimal distance from each other or 200 microns. So go ahead and add a piece of paper, any sort of paper will work, and fold it in half. So what happened to my paper? Perfect, so I'm gonna fold it hamburger style. Like so. And now that we have it auto-homed, I'm going to move my camera to show you a couple of different things before we start leveling it. So I'm gonna show you the adjustment areas that we need to look for. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that just on the back of my build plate. Underneath the build area, you'll notice that there are adjustment knobs that have springs above them, just like this one here. By turning it 
counterclockwise, it'll lower the plate. If we turn it clockwise, it'll make the plate go higher. Counterclockwise is going to bring it down. Clockwise will move it up. Clock up, count down. What we're going to do is we're going to, if you look inside here, you should be able to see a small nozzle that's almost touching the build area. And that small nozzle is what we want to have a distance from. So I'm going to go ahead and move this nozzle directly above the first spring. Right about there. Once you have it above the spring, we're going to put the piece of paper in between the two. I'm going to take this piece of paper and I'm going to slide it in between my nozzle and the build area, like so. Now what we're looking to achieve is a small resistance on the piece of paper when we move it back and forth. So that's telling us that the gap is 200 microns because one sheet of paper is 100, folded in half is 200. So mine's a little bit loose. I would need to raise it up in order to make it a little bit tighter. So I'm going to go clockwise to do that. So a little bit clockwise and then check the piece of paper again. I'll notice that there is a little bit more drag on the paper. So I'm going to do it just a little bit more to make sure that I have it right. My paper came out. Um, if your paper comes out or you can't get it underneath, push down on the build plate and then slide it under. All right, so go ahead and level the first spot by trying to find that resistance on the piece of paper that doesn't make it buckle, but you do feel it almost dragging or vibrating. You guys have any questions about that? Nope, I think we're good. Okay. This is the most common troubleshooting step. 90% of the time, you need to level the build plate. Okay, did we get the first point? Yeah. Okay, then we can go ahead and move on to the next corner. And there's going to be one in each corner. So go ahead and continue for the next three around the build area. And then let me know when you guys are finished. I'm gonna do the same, okay? Thank you. 
Yeah, we accidentally lifted the nozzle up. Are okay. You yeah. And, uh, so we went back to uh, return at home. Yeah. Uh, how do you get back to motor, uh, disable motors? Okay, so that's also in setup. So if you go ahead and click on it, and then go to setup, auto home, and disable motors are right next to each other. Now it says uh, status screen, tune settings, and change filament. Okay, so it sounds like you started a print. Go ahead. If you go ahead and click stop print at the bottom. Do you see that? No, it doesn't. It says refresh SD card. Okay, so if you auto homed it and it's not done moving, it is still going to stay change filament and stuff until it's finished moving. So once it's okay. moving, it should so set up again. Okay. So if I if I go back right now, you'll notice that mine says the same thing. It says like tune settings as it's still moving. And so if you are having problems and it won't go back, you can just flip the switch here in the back, turn it off and flip it back on, and then it should reset everything so that it'll be easier. So I'm going to go set up and then auto home again. Okay, yeah, now we got it. Okay. Yeah, so if you we're we're gonna zero or we're gonna space it now. Okay. Yep, so if you ever move the z-axis up, make sure you auto home it again and then just go ahead and do the process again. Whatever point you had level should stay the same and it shouldn't change at all. So we want to consider the build plate to be moving, not the nozzle. Okay. Okay. So his sweet. Thank you. Hey, Jared. Yes. Yeah, sure. I went. I went ahead and checked on your spools of filament where they were located. So we sent those through the U.S. Postal Service. So they should be arriving very soon. They okay. Were, they're just a little bit slower than FedExes. Okay, that's fine. Yep. Awesome. Thanks for checking on that. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. How are we doing? We have any questions about leveling? Nope, they're working on that right now. Sweet. Sounds good. You guys have been an excellent class. Uh, I'm going to make it 
touch my head. Must yeah, do Okay, we're level. Okay, sweet. So what this is the last fourth and final step, so the filament. And so all we have to do is speed the filament in and talk about a few of the things that could happen. So now that the build plate's level, the build plate is considered probably the most troubleshooting step you'll have to do. And that's just because it needs to stick and it needs to be a horizontal. So like when the plastic comes out of the nozzle, you want it to look like it's directly going like this. So it basically has an nozzle here and it's pretty much gonna look like the plastic is doing this right out. Of it. And that's going to be a very nice and level build plate. If it's not sticking or it's kind of spider webbing on top of the build area, it's too far away. And if it's not coming out when you don't see any plastic, but the nozzle is basically touching the build area, it's too close. That means it's causing back pressure and it can't actually push it through. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit about this chain, this filament. And so mine is a red filament, pretty nice. You guys have that white, it should sit onto your rack just like so. It should also have small tabs or circles inside of it that allow you to feed the filament through the side. This is a good way to keep it so it doesn't tangle or come unspooled. Now if it does tangle and it ends up having a knot in it and it's trying to push it into the, into the printer, it will mess up and you will under extrude and you won't quite make your model. So first thing that we're gonna do is we can go ahead and start heating up our printer. So go ahead and click on the button, go to setup and then click on preheat PLA. While you're in that menu, also take note that there's another value of preheat. So I'm gonna to go to setup, then preheat PLA and preheat soft pool. So a soft pool heats it up to 100 degrees Celsius. Now the reason why we would do that is it's going to pull out the plastic in a semi-solid, semi-liquid state. So it's going to be during the transition phase. At that transition phase, it helps to pull all the old gunk or plastic or anything out of this area and remove it. So when taking plastic out in order to swap colors or otherwise, try and do a soft pull. So heat it up to 100 degrees just by clicking setup, preheat soft pull, and then pull the filament out. Now preheat PLA is going to heat it to 220 degrees as your screen should show, and it will also heat up the build plate. So keep in mind the build plate does get moderately warm. It's not going to burn you by the touch, but it is pretty warm. The nozzle, in fact, will burn you. Please don't touch it when it's heated up. So one thing you may want to do is you may want to raise your X axis up now that we have it heating up because it can burn into the spilled area. So you can either do that by just grabbing the spiral on the back with your hands and maybe getting a little bit greasy. Just by turning it to, the, to clockwise, it should move it up. Or you can also click on our machine, go down to controls, then choose, oh, yeah, sorry. Go down to controls, go all the way down, 
and click on move axis. We can click move one millimeter. And finally move Z. And then we'll able to change that value and I just changed it to 20. That should be more than good enough. And that's going to actually have the printer itself raise the X axis bar up or raise in the Z axis. If you want to go back, you can just click on the button again and you can click all the way back through the screen. So always the top value will return you to the screen before. All right, so mine is just about heated up. Mine's at about 205 for the nozzle and two, and that is more than enough for me to start feeding filament in. So if we look here in the back, I'm going to move the camera. You're going to notice that we have this yellow area right next to the Z axis. And so this yellow area here is where we will push the filament in, and it's also going to be a trigger, so we will have to squeeze this area. Now that's to release the idler pulley, which is this small piece right here, that clamps the plastic to our feeder gear. So what we're going to do is we're going to unspool the plastic real quick. Just pull it out of the hole on the side. We need to snip the end. So most of the time when you pull out plastic, it's going to kind of look like this. You see how I have this extra tail? I'm going to need to cut that. Inside of your toolkit, you should have a pair of shears. Yours may be blue handled, mine are black. We're just going to take it, we're going to cut it at an angle in order to help feed it through. So right where the blob ends, I'm just going to take it and cut it. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it underneath like so, where it's coming from the bottom. Place it on my spool. And then I'm going to take it, take that small strand, and push it through that hole on the yellow trigger. Once through the first hole, I will have to squeeze the trigger and then push it through to the second side, and then push it all the way through the tube. It'll take it a little bit, and it'll, it'll feed quite a ways, but you should feel it kind of stop. And it is, has resistance, and it's going to be harder to push but go ahead and push it a little bit extra. And that's going to push filament out of the nozzle. So go ahead and check it out. Once you hit that point and you push a little bit extra, you should extrude some, just like so. So this is the method to push out old colors. If the soft pulled in and remove it, this is a good way to push extra filament through make sure it's primed and ready, and also push out any old colors. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that line is clear, and just push a little bit more. It does dry rather quickly, but please, if you're grabbing close to the nozzle, please use a tool. Do not injure yourself. It is hard to burn yourself on these printers. You have to touch the nozzle itself. But make sure you're using a tool if you're moving from up here. How do you guys feel about putting the film in? Good? Uh, we're having trouble getting it to come out the nozzle. Getting it to come out the nozzle? Yeah. Okay. So did you get it all the way through the tube? Yeah, we've got it to the tube. We're having trouble. We're still pushing it. Okay, what's the temperature at on your machine? Uh, which, which one, 100. 100. If it's at 100, it's not going to push through. So 100 is a transition phase. So go ahead and go back to setup and click preheat PLA, not preheat soft pool. Okay. Uh, if you click preheat PLA, that's when you feed filament in. Preheat soft pool is to remove filament. Uh, okay. Cool. Yep, we'll just have to wait a little bit for it to heat up and then you should basically see it come right out. Okay. 
Awesome. Our so bell, me, our bell is about to ring. How much longer do we do we need? Um, actually, we don't really need any more time. As a matter of fact, we can go ahead and start our print. Once you have the filament fed through. Okay. Okay. So remember the troubleshooting steps. First is Kira. Second is going to be mechanical inspection. Third is level the bill plate. And fourth is if anything clogs, try a soft pull before doing anything else. So you can click on your button one more time. Go down to print from SD card. Click on that button and then choose the file that you saved earlier. So I'm gonna choose six sided dice and click on it. The first thing I'm gonna try and do is heat up then it'll move to origin point, and then it'll start printing. There mine goes. All right, guys, sounds like that was the bell. You have been an excellent class. I appreciate your time. Hopefully everything works out on the printer. If not, please shoot me an email or shoot an email to service at nwa3d.com. Okay, if, if, this starts, if this starts printing, is it okay to leave it? Do I need to be yes. shut it off? Absolutely, you can leave this thing overnight. It's not gonna hurt anything. And whenever it finishes the print, it'll cool off and move to the side. Okay, awesome. All so, right, thank you. No problem, I'll send you a follow-up email. Jared, I appreciate your time, and I have a recording for this as well. All right, thank you. Thanks, guys.